SMT Nation, we back, and we're going to be taking a look at this story uh, written by Mike Dano, Light Reading. I'll link it for you guys to check it out, but we're going to chop it up into a lot of little bits and pieces. What I think is a well-written article that's very comprehensive, but I, the reason I want to pick it apart is because there are like 10 or 15 things, some of which I completely agree with, some of which I completely disagree with. Uh, so let's take a look at it and see where you guys stand. Offer me your commentary down in the comment section. A look at fixed wireless access, Pyrrhic victory over cable. I'm not sure if you guys know what this is in reference to. Essentially, a, a Pyrrhic victory is when the outcome, if you were to like win in a battle or a war, is not worth the cost. It, so it's essentially winning something that is worth very little meaning you're trying to win and it just isn't worth it. <laughs> you know, the, the, the fruits of what you gain from it, the, the thing you're actually winning, uh, it, it, the, the value just doesn't, you know, uh, it, it's just not worth the efforts and all the losses you take with it. <laughs> all right. So here, uh, an interesting title for sure. Uh, as the second quarter earnings seasons comes to a close, the numbers reveal a clear victory for fixed wireless access. All right, so T-Mobile and Verizon home internet, and we're talking about the wireless kind, the mobile, you know, cellular network kind, 816,000 new fixed wireless access customers during the period. Meanwhile, cable companies, Charter and Comcast, collectively lost 21,000 broadband customers. So there is your victory for fixed wireless access over cable. Uh, it says here, cable companies, of course, will continue to fight back with targeted promotions, edge outs into new markets, and bundling with products like their low-cost wireless service. So that's going to be the answer for big cable. Sell the wireless service, bundle it together, promotional pricing, you know, beating out Verizon and T-Mobile in that way. And I think it's smart of them to do so. But what's surprising to some, not the SMT, probably not most of the SMT nation either, fixed wireless access, has exploded. It's been an extremely rapid ascension. Uh, the joining of the party by fixed wireless access. A lot of people thought this was going to happen next year. A lot of people thought it wouldn't happen until maybe 2024 even. But here is fixed wireless access making an impact, the 5G home. All right, it's a new source of pressure. It's clearly taking its toll on cable. And this is according to New Street Research. Even cable executives have acknowledged the fact that Verizon and T-Mobile are encroaching upon their core market of home internet access. All right, this is from Charter CEO Tom Rutledge. It's not the major component of our quarterly performance, but it's a factor. As he discussed the topic in their quarterly call. Another quote, we are not seeing fixed wireless have any discernible impact on our churn, but its growth appears to be another contributor to our lower connect activity. And that's from Comcast CEO Brian Roberts. So kind of a backhanded way to admit that it is a factor. And then here are some of the public spats that are going on between companies like Verizon and the cable guys, or what I call Cable Town. All right. And, you know, Cable Town will tell you 5G home internet customers are at a disadvantage. 5G home can't do what a dedicated connection to a premise can do with a wire. All right, and that's clearly not true, as customers are very satisfied with fixed wireless access. All right, now it says here the momentum against cable in the months and years to come, because 5G networks don't have as much capacity as cable, and because fixed wireless access customers aren't nearly as profitable as standard smartphone customers. So there's that little bit of tug of war. But let's call a spade a spade here. If the question is, is this sustainable for T-Mobile and Verizon? That probably is going to be the key factor here. The primary use case of the T-Mobile network and the Verizon network are for smartphone users, traditional cell phone users. And, and, that, can count, and that includes you know tablets and hotspots and all that, and connected devices. But it's, the concern is, at some point, the networks will be full of fixed wireless traffic, right? So home internet users, and the capacity just won't be there. They won't be able to support more customers unless they buy more spectrum and more equipment. And I agree with that statement, but who's to say that's a problem? 
if if you were uh let's make it really simple like like kid style right if you owned a lemonade stand and you were open for business and sold a thousand cups of lemonade between 9 a.m and 3 p.m and you ran out of lemonade why don't you make more lemonade to sell that lemonade right so fix wireless traffic if you have the demand buying more spectrum and more equipment seems to make sense if you're already deploying a network the network exists the, the infrastructure is there the towers are there why not just make more more lemonade right and they're saying here it's a cost like at some point the cost will be much greater than the return all right now let's let's look more at this right t-mobile and verizon are deploying up to 100 megahertz of mid-band spectrum in top markets across the country the spectrum is giving them network capacity to add fixed wireless access customers keep in mind verizon also does 5g home with millimeter wave now when we look at the usage and this is important to distinguish what's going on on verizon and t-mobile's network the average smartphone user according to ericsson uses 12 gigs of data per month that essentially means you will have no issues supplying capacity to all of your traditional mobile customers the trouble here is that the average household uses at least 500 gigs per month so when you look at that as a multiplier we're talking 40 50 times higher in terms of the capacity usage they're going to need much more of those resources that are on the network another thing to consider is timing because you don't want to see your customers experience degraded network experience all right it says here verizon looks at this from timing most of the traffic peaks between 12 and 6 for the smartphone user so what are people doing before after 12 and 6 what why aren't they on their smartphones well they're probably on their home they're probably on their home home network so that's where the timing is important so you got all this smartphone usage between 12 and 6 or what's referred to as peak and then off peak the network is just idle mostly right so that means go ahead and support the fixed wireless consumer as people are on their home networks you can go ahead and just use the network at that point in time so you essentially have a scheduled monetized segment of the day that's how Verizon is looking at it. And again, Verizon is going to have millimeter wave. I think what people are forgetting is T-Mobile and Verizon have additional network assets. Verizon is fearlessly deploying small cells and splitting cells, uh, adding macros. T-Mobile, the same thing, right? They're starting to do some small cells from what I could see. Uh, they're starting to upgrade backhaul. The carriers are not as restricted as I think this article may make it seem. Yes, these concerns are real. You know, um, I'm, I'm not going to downplay the limitations and the finite resource nature of fixed wireless access as it's on a mobile network. I'm just saying to be concerned about it today seems a little premature. There is clearly a lot of headroom for fixed wireless access. So here's where this comes into play. Cowan is predicting that Verizon and T-Mobile will win up to 5 million and 8 million total fixed wireless access customers. As of right now, I think T-Mobile's at like 1.5 million or so customers. So they've got room to run. All right, if, if the end game by 2025 is to get between 5 and 8 million between the two companies, I think they end up with much more. Uh, I think they're going to be hurting cable for several years. And it's always about price. The performance, I think, will be fine. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Verizon is going to go to 140, 160, maybe 200 megahertz of N77 in some places. They also use CBRS. There's unlicensed and licensed versions of this. They are doing millimeter wave, you know, at a greater extent than anyone. T-Mobile is continuing to upgrade their network. They buy Spectrum every single auction. They are upgrading sites feverishly, according to SBA. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, you know, they're starting to do their small cell build. Who knows? Maybe they start putting more millimeter wave on these macro sites and, and rooftop sites. I actually have much less concerns, I think, than some of these other insights do. I think there are at least two to three golden years for fixed wireless access where we're going to be seeing 500,000 
600,000 net ads in 5G Home for T-Mobile. And the same thing for Verizon. I think we have several quarters where we're seeing two, 300,000 net ads each quarter. So what's referred to as a Pyrrhic victory or a hollow victory is this concept that the wireless network, the mobile network, is going to be taking a hit because the growth and home usage is going to hurt the network. I just think that's premature, and I think a lot of those concerns can be offset by spending and improvements in technology and the addition of more spectrum. And I'm not saying that fixed wireless access is going to replace cable, you know, and I'm not saying it's going to replace fiber. I'm saying it's going to offer another competitor and substitute for some customers. And these fixed wireless networks are going to be able to support it. AT&T is not going in with fixed wireless access on their mobile network. They're going to leave that alone, right? They're, if they do fixed wireless access, they do dedicated, you know, networking, private, it's like private networking, right? Uh, and, and there's like starry home internet that do fixed wireless access in different ways, MDUs and stuff like that. I simply do not have the concerns in 2022 that some of these analysts, as well as some of the writers of these articles, I think they are prematurely writing the book on fixed wireless access. I think we have room to run, folks. I would not be concerned about capacity restrictions on fixed wireless access, at least for another few years. And there are going to be more and more spectrum auctions, and there's going to be more millimeter wave deployed and more fiber upgrades are happening. There's going to be continued cell splitting with small cells and uh, upgrades are happening at a blistering pace. I simply do not see it this way. And this is why I said a lot of the concerns in here are legitimate, but I think they are premature. Expect continued growth from fixed wireless access for years to come. Tell me what you think. Comment down below. Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? And tell me why. Give me your rationale. And tell me what you guys think of this article. Well written. Excellent um, insights there from Mike Dano. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on that bell notification icon to never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Twitter handle, my Patreon page if you want to support us, and also my Gmail address for all business inquiries. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.